I knew going into my last year of my contract with the Pelicans that it was going to be my last year. And the other side of that was so terrifying. Mm -hmm. It was so scary. And I, and I had had a podcast, but I, I, again, it was like, is it was, is podcasting my future? I didn't know. And it almost feels weird to say podcasting is my future yeah, too. So you're like, is that yeah. even a thing? But I, oh yeah, it's a thing though. I, I know, I know. But like, well, when you're like, <laughs> yeah, but when I, you first kind of start, you're like, is this really a deal? And like the last three, four years, I called my, I called it. my parents. Actually, my parents called me because they were worried about me. It was uh, New Year's morning. We had played a road game in Oklahoma City, I think, the night before. Got in late. I went to bed at like 3 a.m. Woke up at eight had a missed call from my mom. So I called my mom back and she was like, you know, we're really worried about you. My family was in Brooklyn and I was living on my own in new Orleans. And I was like super emotional because on Christmas morning we were in Miami and my, my wife had sent me a video of my uh, now yeah, five-year-old running down the stairs to the Christmas tree. And I basically checked out at that moment. Like I was like, I just want to be home. I don't want to do this. And my mom, I told my mom, I was like, I, just want to get in my car and drive from New Orleans back to New York City. Like mm. I just want to be home. And she's like, why don't you? And I said, because I'm fucking terrified, mom. Like I'm so scared of what the rest of my life is. Like think about you guys play U sports. I'm guessing I started at seven years old. Mm. I'm 37 now. I retired at 37, 30 years of my life. I, I'm not great at math, but I, would guarantee that's probably high 80% of my life. 89% of my life has been wrapped up in sports. My identity, my ego structure, everything is so ingrained in being a basketball player. Yeah. And like letting go of that, letting go of that thing. Fuck, dude, it was terrifying. But I can say to your point about like feeling safe about it. Mm. I'm like, no, I, I, can, I can do other things. And maybe it's, maybe it's this for a while. Maybe it's something else, but I'm, it's a weird place to be, you know, basically a year out of retirement to be like, okay, I'm going to be fine. My life's yeah. going to be okay. Yeah. Gonna be, you're, everything's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's like yeah. getting to that other side of it. Cause yeah. you're right. Like it's that example. We spend scary. however many years of our life just doing one thing. And I feel like, like you're probably the same way. Like even when you're in it, you have interests and every kind of player and athlete feels like they have something they're kind of lining themselves up for. They have a curiosity or oh, I'm going to do this afterwards. Everybody feels confident. But when those, like, for me, it was like three years ago. I thought that could potentially have been my last year. And you're just like, I was getting into real estate. I was I was journaling up pod, the podcast, what it could look like. But I was just terrified. I'm like, man, I'm not playing a whole lot this year. Like, this could be it. Like, I truly have to. I've always been the guy that felt comfortable and be like, oh, I'll figure something out. Like, I already have a few things going, blah, blah, blah. But, like, man, I really have to figure out, like, what I enjoy because this could be coming faster than what I realize. And And for me with the podcast stuff, like, it's, it's like, like you were saying, it like scratches that curiosity, that yeah. itch that you have. Like, I love like talking to people. I feel like if I get to learn something about somebody, like we've had on like Darren Wall or Max Crow, we've had on a lot of incredible people, but a couple of those stories stand out where Max is talking about his sobriety. Darren Waller's talking about his sobriety and just going in depth and like, sh like giving athletes kind of a platform to talk about stuff. And like you said, like I'll, you'll have people call and be like, yo, I didn't fuck with that guy, but that's really cool. Or it's just like, yo, I like this person, but man, I did not know he fucking went through that. Mm -hmm. And it's like yeah. really cool that you guys are able to like peel back layers because they feel comfortable sitting in front of you because we're all athletes. Right. Because a lot of stuff that you'll give a microphone or to reporters or something, you're either in the locker room, when you're, you're, you're back up or somebody that you're competing with sitting next to you, like guys are around there. You're Egos not going to- are up, walls are up. Yeah, everything's up. You're not going to, you're not mm -hmm. going to actually give reporters and talk about stuff. Not because you won't give it to the reporter. One, you won't give it to the reporter, but also like the environment you're in, you're just not, your guards up. Like you said, egos are going. And like when you're on something like this, I just feel like everybody feels more comfortable when they're talking with like athletes or there's more of like an unfiltered approach, like being for the boys. We tell everybody, if there's something that you don't like, let us know. We'll take it off. Like we've talked right. about jerk off stories that somebody's wanted theirs off. We kept ours on, but right. some of us like, yo, just be yourself. We'll talk about that soon. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yo, just let it fly and be yourself. And if you're driving, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're driving very back much, and you want to take yeah. it off, we'll take it off. People ask me all the time what this podcast is about. I literally go, I think it's just like a bunch of guys in the locker room talking. Yeah, and it's like the conversations you would have. But another thing uh, to what you were saying is like. We talk about all the time, like how you have like these blinders on how you're so zoomed into the world that you live in. And like 
not only let's say uh, besides the podcast, like football, like I go and play football and then I spend time in the off season watching free agency. And then I spend time watching the combine. Then I watch the draft and see who the guys I'm going to go against soon, who, what they're going to be like. And then the, like shortly after that, the schedule comes out and then you're in OTAs. And then you have that six weeks break where you're just so focused and in like your fight camp going into camp. It's a year round thing. And what this has allowed us to do, or especially myself, because I get super caught up in like thinking like everyone is so focused and dialed in on Tennessee Titan football. When really, if I just like zoom out for a second, it's like, there's a, there's a, a bunch of people that are, but for the most part, like ain't nobody gives a <laughs> shit what I'm doing. You know, it's like, I'll be in camp and it'll be the middle of August and it's I'm right in the middle. The, the start is too far to see and the, and the end's not close enough. And you're just kind of like fucking in it. And you have a day off and you go drive home and you say, ah, you know what? I'm going to go cruise down Broadway real quick and see what's going on. And you go down Broadway and you see every type of person walking up and down, drinking, having a good time, going, they don't give two shits that the Tennessee Times had practice today <laughs> or we were watching film or who we're going to play. And it allows you to be like, oh, like, I'm going to be, it's going to be all right. It's kind of what comes down to is like, mm. oh, this isn't as overwhelming consuming to everybody as you think it is. I experienced that at Duke because I felt like I feel like uh, I, I feel like they a, all wanted it there. I feel like I was in a fishbowl at Duke, mm. and when I got on the other side of it, I was like, "Oh, you know, what? like Duke basketball, like it's well known, but it's not actually like that important." But at the time, it felt like every single thing I did was live or die. It, it felt mm. very intense to me. 